no, thank you for for accepting my invitation. I appreciate it. No, it's an absolute pleasure, man. Yeah, no, thank nice you. Nice to see you. And talk yeah, to you. you too. How's no. everything on that side? Yeah, good. It's home now. Uh, it's yeah. home for us. Yeah, much settled. Yeah, it's a nice part of the world, right? Yeah, and you yourself, you 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 located to. Yeah, you you miss home, but 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 it's absolutely beautiful here. Yeah, it's 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 really it's a it's a it's a stunning place. Are you in the city? I mean, Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. nice. And and I'm. Um, uh, it's like if you call me during the day and I showed you that picture during the day, the Saigon River is like just oh, on the wow. other side. So it's that's, actually, it, it's, it's nice. That's amazing. No, that, how long have you been there? Shoo. So my, my, my kid um, came here after COVID and um, um, the Vietnam's numbers were really low and my wife being Vietnamese and my son being half Vietnamese, right. the Vietnam um, embassy flew them here. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, we didn't expect that we get, uh, you know, South Africans, we get any sort of travel restrictions. So I thought I'll join them in a week or two. Yeah. And um, yeah, I didn't see my son, man, for 10 months after that. Wow. He that was must two. have been a, it must you have know, been a anxiety. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> COVID had an effect on everybody, so I don't complain about it too much. Yeah. But yeah, so he's been, by the time I saw him again, he was speaking Vietnamese, he was in school. So I left him for a little bit. I thought it'd be great for him to get his, like, his mother's culture. Um, and since then, we've just been staying here and it's been fun. You know, I, I say you run your company from anywhere, right? Yeah, well, um, Australia is our second biggest region. Um, I believe, and uh, Philippines recently has been like really pumping. Um, so uh, lots of opportunity across the board. Nice. Yeah. No, happy. Uh, no, I'm I'm glad that you you found your feet and you know you've settled now. Yeah, man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying Canada. Yeah, it's you feel amazed, eh? day uh, when um, people from back home um, come to. Vietnam, they call. Oh, wow. they let me know they're going to be. Uh, That's yeah, amazing. And I see, I get to see uh, 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 a lot of the people from back home when they visit. It's uh, everybody's doing well. It's nice to see, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. It's good to know that people out. So, like, you know, even if it's tough, they get through it. So, yeah, and you know, I think in today's world. I think it's 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 rare that people still have such a tight bond with people they knew from when they were kids, right? It we becomes tighter, realize. right? Yeah, it becomes tighter. I think. Yeah, we don't realize it, like, but but that's not normal for 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 like, like I guess for people in other countries, etc. They don't have anybody they know from like, you know, they grew up in the same neighborhood, they went to school together, and all of those things. So uh, when I, you know, and I tell people like, like they ask me like, how long, you know, somebody and I was like, almost <laughs> all my life, <laughs> you know, like, then like, it's, it, it's hard to comprehend. How do you yeah, know exactly. all your life? It's like, we grew up together. <laughs> no, I mean, we've, we've come across and like, we've started, like, started connecting like dots to like friends, families, like those that knew each other growing up. Like I never knew, like now we start to like meet people and like oh no i know this person from lens i know this person from pretoria i'm like oh, okay <laughs> no 100 percent. i know that feeling yes guys welcome back to another episode of zen and now with me kishan morar and today i have a very special guest with me um co-founder and ceo of snowed Cybersecurity solutions um, welcome to the show, Nitya and Naidu. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Good to be here. No, welcome. Happy to have you on the show. Um, tell us about cybersecurity and how is it fit into your life? Oh, wow. Um, so cybersecurity is it's one of the things that I, I love. Um, I love lots of things. Um, it's, uh, you know, but I'm lucky enough to do it as a job. Right. Um, I'm also, you know, 
at a very young age. I got into it about 20 years ago uh, when it wasn't as, I guess, pervasive as it is today as a, as a career option. And um, I got to, to learn from some of like the best in the world and I got to travel the world. Um, so cybersecurity is a big part of my life. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the core of my, my business today. Uh, it's also been my profession for about 20 years. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have gotten into the field very early while it was still an emerging sort of like fledgling profession. Right. Um, there were very few of us at that time who did it across the globe. It's not as pervasive as it is today as a profession. And that meant I got to travel a lot. I got to learn from some of the best in the world. And um, I got to do a lot of exciting work. Right. So, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with it as a career choice. And uh, I love it a lot. So it doesn't feel like I've ever worked a day in my life, which is nice. Yeah, passions never feel like uh, work, right? Yeah, it never feels like work. Yeah, I think you joined, I think you started, a, you started in a field when it was very young uh, in its presence in the world. Uh, and and what, what year was about, what year did you, did you think? What year it can you say? It was early 2000s. Oh, that was just when the internet was starting to take off, right? No, I think it was, you know, the internet was in full swing, but I think a large part of why you, 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 you would think that was, you know, that's when internet banking and, you know, the more the e-commerce side of things took off. But we can remember like when we were young, when we were kids, you know, dial up modems. Yeah. And, <laughs> I don't know if you're like war dialing and oh yeah, yeah. and all those kinds of activities. Um, and I'll never forget the 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 sound. You know, a Duxbury modem would would, would make you know connecting to the to the internet. And to, we'd to all go through telephone the line. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, the the internet was in full swing, but it wasn't as accessible as it it came through the nineties. You know, it came became truly accessible. You know, that's the, you know, like, uh, that's when hyper-connectivity took off, e-commerce took off in a big way, especially for us in Africa. Yeah. But um, my work wasn't confined to Africa. We got to do work all over the world, the US, Europe, uh, the Middle East, um, you know, Australia, and um, even today at Snow, we cover six of the seven continents. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, a large part of our client base is spread across the world. And today I live in Southeast Asia. You know, having this interview with you, it's nighttime here. Yeah, it's morning time here. <laughs> you know, morning where you are. <laughs> so far, we're both very far from home on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's been an amazing journey. And tell me about, like, was there a moment where you decided, okay, this is the field that I want to, or was it like always something that you, uh, you, you grew up in tech? Or was, it, was there a moment that you decided cybersecurity is the field I want to pursue? I had an affinity for breaking things out of curiosity more than creating things. Like, I like to think I'm, I'm, I'm still quite a creative person, but my, my process for creation has a lot to do with synthesis and... Right you know, understanding things, you know, and how they work and then, and then sort of mapping that and creating something new out of it. Um, if I could contrast it to a painter, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, like a collage right. uh, rather than, uh, you know, a landscape or a portrait, taking pieces of, of, of research, pieces of things I, I find experience, all of those kinds of things. And creating something out of a large part of breaking into systems is understanding the system deeply to that extent that you can give it an input it wasn't designed to handle to give you an output that is of your choice yeah um that also wasn't designed or not necessarily the designer expected as an output and uh, you know that's that's a large part of like my you know, the, the stuff that makes me tick. So uh, at the time, uh, coming out of uh, 
you know, university, my first job was definitely the career I was targeting for those reasons, just because I thought, you know, I, I, my unique set of skills lean towards that. Um, it was also, it's fun, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, so, I've also had that. I've got a bit of experience in cybersecurity and as well. Uh, yeah. It keeps you on your toes. It's it's also exciting. Like I don't know, I don't know. I can't explain the feeling. Probably, I can I can't explain that feeling to somebody. It's just you know exciting to break things and fix it at the same time. Yeah, and and and, and your background was networks, right? Am I am I right? Getting yeah, I right? started off in support, and then I yeah. I transitioned. To networks and then to security. Security, right? yeah. So like networks also, it's like a I know some people might be boring, probably the same way that accounting is boring to us. But there there's a there's a beauty to and creativity to to networks and oh yeah working and I'm, I mean look at making the, solutions. Look at the data centers. I mean that's like art. Yeah, it is like look, I mean, if you look if you go into like the world's best data centers, it's like a it's like a it's like a museum in there. Yeah, a museum and a light show at the same time. <laughs> so, so, so I think I think while you were going through that transition through networks, you know, switching, routing, mm -hmm. those kinds of things, I think um, it, it was a very similar path for me, finding that beauty in like code and operating systems and those kinds of things, and then figuring out ways to um, not not to manipulate them. But to ele elegantly um, navigate. navigate them, yeah. And um, you know whether it was like uh, you know it's a weapon system or a internet banking or a um, something. You, you you know like a SCADA system that's running a sugar factory or a mine or mine, a yeah. automotive kind of yeah. thing. It was it was always really interesting to me. Okay, and you always had like the knack of. Or getting into things and seeing how they work on the uh, from a, from a as you say from from a deeper perspective instead of just the front end. Yeah, I must be honest. I must be honest. I wasn't um, when I started. I I joined a a group of really really strong. Uh, I joined a really strong team. Great. We're still a strong team today. So um, most of them are like CEO of global cybersecurity companies. You know, um, one's, one's a few years older than me. He's already retired. Um, and his software um, is Montego. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, so, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to use their names without their permission. Right. Um, and um, I always... You know, because of the company you were keeping, I always felt like technically I wasn't the strongest. Okay. So, so when when people tell me about deep skills or deep understanding, you know, you know, it's such a, a subjective thing, because you know, next to individuals like that, you no, know, I think my understanding up to today is still shallow in comparison. But you know, it's 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 pretty deep, you know, on 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 average. Oh, but, but I think um, you've done well. I think you've. So I think you've done well. I think uh, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. Personally, like I think you've you've really done amazing things with just not not just with Snow, but also your career, just your career path. Uh, I mean, and, and now to establish yourself and and have something that you can call your own, I think you should give yourself massive credit for that. Thank you, thank you. But um, but um, I think I also think. It, it, it's very, very nice of, of, of you to say. And, you know, I look back fondly at, at like what has been achieved. But, you know, there's still that hunger and that desire because there's, there's, there's more to be done and more can be done. Yeah. And, I think, and I think as you, um, as you grow, not just in like become older, but as you grow as a person, you start seeing the, the, the universe more as a collective consciousness and you start realizing that you know your talents can be used for for a lot more than you know just simple commercialization don't get me wrong commercialization yeah. is good it creates jobs it creates opportunities 
it creates it's great to have a South African brand that sits on a global stage, you know, that that mm-hmm. runs in Brazil and and Philippines, like we were talking about. But I think beyond that, to 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 use your talents, I'll give you a good example. We use our talents to help law enforcement, so tracking and tracing of like missing kids and and people who have been human trafficked, and we're trying to use our 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 capabilities to uh, you know predict violent unrest and and outbreaks of violence, predictive policing, etc. Mm-hmm. And you realize that maybe there's a deeper cause, you yeah. know, a deeper calling to 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 how you can use those skills mm-hmm. to to the embitterment of 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 those around you. That's so interesting that you say that. Uh... Because it's so profound that you, what you call your passion is also something that you're using to work, to to help mankind, um, and that's such a such a rare thing in in this day and age where you get the opportunity to use your, you know, something that you really love doing, uh, and giving back, not just not just on a uh, like you say commercial perspective, but from a deeper human perspective. You know, you're trying to save lives as well, and that's that's truly commendable as well. No, thanks. But I, I also think we, we, all, we all have that opportunity to, to contribute. And I think of your, your show, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your show is a perfect example, right? I think we live in a day and an age where um, I, think, I think people are, are a little bit lost. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you're, you're living in... Um, you're living in this uh, tumultuous period with social media, um, lots of influences, yeah. and um, and and a generation that's kind of uh, you know um, feeling a little bit lost. Mm-hmm. And by you know bringing them back to like some first principles around philosophy and Buddhism. Basics. Zen. Yeah. So I'm 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 a big fan of the Taoist canon. Oh, nice. And I love like Art of War. Um, and and forgive me if I, uh, you know, like I I love all the scriptures. Yeah. Right. Book of Five Rings. I like I like a lot of the the Eastern books. As a matter of fact, um, I think it was like Deepak Chakra's um, Twelve Laws of Spiritual Success. Am I right? And then I went I to so. Eckhart Tolle's Power of yeah, Now. Yeah, yeah. And I read the Bhagavad Gita before I, I read any of those books. Mm-hmm. I never quite got it. And I think what these guys do is they make some of these philosophies that whether you're Christian or 100%, you know, yeah. you're Muslim, it, it, it's, 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 it's the same, same it's principles. The same yeah. principles. It makes it a little bit more accessible. And, um, and, and, and then you navigate... And you know, each time the message is reinforced, mm-hmm. but it's reinforced with a little bit more depth. Yes. And by the time you reading like books like The Art of War and The Book of Five Rings, which is, you know, you can easily be misunderstood, right? Because it's like war, right? Yeah. But you're you're understanding layers of competition and how they work, etc. And I think um I think, you know, some of those philosophies and you know and you know could be used today and so that's why i thought your your talk show was was a great initiative oh i mean thank you so much i appreciate that yeah i like i said like like you said your passion my passion also is is to also help people i've i've had that since i was a very young kid uh just didn't know how to tap into it uh and as like you said as you as you transition in life you find deeper meaning to things you find a little bit more grounding, you find a little more, you know, uh, if it, you have to go through life experiences to actually get you to a point where you say, okay, this is exactly what I want to do with life. And um, that's why I created the, the show is like, like you said, we're living in a tumultuous time and a lot of people feel lost and they just need to know and feel that, okay, I'm not the only person going through whatever you're going through in life. Because a lot of people feel mm-hmm. alone. And that's why I created the show. I went through something that I felt like I was alone, but I wasn't alone. And now I'm giving just a little bit of a, 
a, a visual aid for for people or to say you know i know this person because they they also they also people also are attracted to uh how do you say uh, familiarity you know mm. i mean you can always see celebrities and they can talk about their experiences but you don't really attach yourself to that but if you know if you like have somebody who you've known personally you've grown up with uh you know them on a personal level and and knowing that they also like everybody goes through things in life i think you you feel a little bit more calm a little bit more uh, you give yourself a, a little bit more peace of mind to know that whatever i'm going through is not just my own personal challenge but a lot of people have actually um are, are, are struggling and and need a voice or just need a, an ear just to listen and say hey i'm not alone yeah i think i think also i think sometimes it's difficult it's difficult to to be present it's it's difficult for some people to 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 you know to 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 let go of the past it's mm-hmm. difficult to have that positive mindset um and 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 um and i think the 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 universe has a way of of speaking to us mm-hmm. if you can trust that voice of the universe um you know and you can follow it uh and you can have that faith and that belief but not a blind kind of faith you've got to have intention you know yes. you've got to put that intention out there and that intention then ripples yeah that's a good one and then the universe starts uh coercing to give you what you want yeah but you've got to you've got to act with intent mm-hmm. i i'll give you um i'll give you a a good example in back at home you know i i go back home i love it go see all the friends but i fall into some really you know like i it breaks patterns because i live between home i live between south africa and right. and 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 southeast asia mm-hmm. and even when i'm in south africa it's a lot of traveling etc around the continent etc but when i'm home here i wake up early because we wake up a couple of hours before like hours before your time zone uh african our core time zone right, is right. like it's only philippines and australia really that are our two big areas that are operating at that given time and one of the things i do is i go in and i go to the gym and i make sure that you know like i get my mind right yeah and you know i get that positive energy that i need to to sort of spearhead me through the day and i think it's some of those like sort of fundamentals understanding you know what's that foundation you're yeah. building all of this you know success or this vision or mm-hmm. you know i i i i and i know you referred to it as legacy i'm not too sure where i am on the word legacy but like this vision that you're building it on are you building on on top of this foundation of you know good health family you know, no point having a lamborghini and you know you're <laughs> yeah. overweight your kids don't talk to you you're divorced you know you're like like there, there's yeah. absolutely you know that just doesn't resonate with me right yeah, you're okay. like so um and you'll find when once you start putting like some of those foundational elements in place like like you're good with your family you 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 know you have your your friends who give you counsel you're taking care of yourself you're going to the gym you're looking mm-hmm. and feeling and 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 you know yeah, the understand. universe is going to yeah you know you're going to attract all good things a large part of, of having your own business is having that strong mindset right mm-hmm. i don't think any business is fake i think people give up all right if that makes sense and i know you 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 asked me a question once on my failures and i have none because it's only a failure if you don't learn from it and if you learn from it it's not really a failure it's a learning right right so i have lots of learnings along the way and you know you're just pushing forward and you're mm-hmm. pushing forward and 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 you know it's hard someone once told me this is the hardest thing you'll do in your life and you know it was the absolute hardest thing i ever done in my life um but that's part of the the, the reward right it's the process right yeah of of failing getting things wrong learning getting better and constantly improving being better than you were yesterday that's the only real competition is like you who you were yesterday yeah and it's not just being better in like the bottom line right like 
revenue or something. It's 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 you've got to be driven by you know you've got to seek something you know something greater. And like for you and me, right here right now, it's it's about like making that contribution, using our talents to make that contribution, so that we can touch the lives of as many people as possible in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And um, and 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 uh, you know, and we do it in our in our own ways, but you know, it resonates. Yeah, it right? resonates when we start talking. You know, that is is a large part of um, that purpose and that 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 vision and that 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 rock solid mindset that you need to to sort of navigate through the world. And I notice a lot of young people like like struggle. Mm. And and I'm not, I'm not blaming social media, but I think you know all of these things, play a part. you know, they play a part, right? Mm-hmm. And I think uh, you know in a lot of ways, uh, like like I feel for them, right? Because we didn't have those those things. Distractions, yeah, we, yeah. By the time we, you know, they they got to us, I think you know we had that mental fortitude and that ability to to you know to to focus and denoise yeah. as we were talking about denoise and 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 you know the yeah. most important thing is doing the most important thing yeah you know that ability to do the most important thing but i notice especially with the kids who come to us um at the at the company because we've got a massive internship program oh nice that takes people from back at home who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and we bring them into the business and we try to get them into the industry and i notice it's it, it's 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 hard you know they more so than teaching them about security i'm teaching them about those Life. fundamentals getting their health right getting their mindset right you know because mindset without you know skill set without mindset you know it's only half the puzzle yeah and amazing like i like i love what you say is that those core fundamentals um uh, like you said you go to the gym in the morning just to prepare your your mind or your just your body for the day because that's that's your time that's the only time that you know that okay i'm not i don't know what's going to happen throughout the day but you know for a specific period of time in the morning it's yours you get to you get to choose how you start your day and it's amazing that you do you, you know you start same like me like i'm a, i wake up try to get my my workout done in the morning so i know i feel my mind is already that know that i've already accomplished something it's done it's ticked off i can go into the day knowing that I've already done my routine and my base is set for the day. And it's just something that was, was taught to me, like growing up, like we were early risers uh, ever since I know my dad was an early riser. Uh, and that was installed in us even till today, as soon as the sun starts to peep through or first light, you know, you're starting to wake up. Um, and, uh, not everybody's the same. I know some people like to take their time and get into the day, which is okay because everybody's not not the same. Uh, but having those core fundamental practices, it just allows you to be a little bit more peaceful with yourself, and not and not overcompensate or overstress about things that you you're not in control of. What you can, what you are in control of, that's your that's your your priority. What you aren't, you know, you, you have to give yourself also a little bit of of slack. Yeah, no, I, I got you. I, I must admit, though, and I think you may do it unconsciously, but I do it quite consciously. While I'm there, I use that period to actually, so, so I, I, I do like a lot of visualization, like, and I learned it um, when we were growing up. We grew up. Uh, I don't know if you can remember across, um, from from Tejal and them, there was a racetrack. Yes, yeah, SWAT cops. Smart cups, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> I um we spent a lot of time on, on smart cups with the uh, bike and one of the things they teach you is to like sort of visualize, see yourself go through. Mm-hmm. A lot of lessons you take from like things you do in life, right? And uh like like just being on the bike is some form of meditation. Yes. Before we continue with today's episode, if you're enjoying it, if I could ask you for a small favor. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It will not only help the channel grow, but it will also allow me to bring you a lot more guests and a lot more experiences. Thank you. Back to the show. Because you're in that present moment. You're not thinking about 
what you're doing tomorrow what you you know some problem you had yesterday you're just trying to no you got to focus yeah you got <laughs> exactly you got to focus <laughs> you know and when you come out you feel that you feel that um you feel the same way you feel like you know if you sat down and you meditated you feel that that yeah. freedom right well one of the things it also taught me well i'll tell you two great lessons it actually uh i i got from that one was visualization and so like when i do that morning prep is really i feel it's part of my prep for my day right and um what i'm doing is i'm i'm, I'm thinking in the back of my head exactly and seeing the day go and i'm seeing it go the way i want it to go i'm seeing myself you know win the battles that i need to win and i'm seeing myself doing the things that i need to get done right you know overcoming the challenges that i need to overcome and that allows me to walk into some of those situations with that positive mindset because in my mind you know i've 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 won i've seen the way this plays out it doesn't always work to, yes. to plan you know like like you're saying some things are in your control and you've got to accept the things that aren't in your control at least you can manage them right yes to a certain degree so you want to manage those things but ultimately we've got like a saying at the office sometimes you're the windscreen sometimes you're the bug right it's it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's but being mentally prepared with that visualization um makes you walk in there with the right kind of mindset right to win in that situation not saying you win you won't always win but starting off you know like i know it's such a cliche but you your prepared. attitude determines your attitude yeah you prepare yeah you know and if you're you know if you're walking there and you've already mentally defeated obviously um chances of you being defeated are a lot a mm. lot I, even if you weren't truly intended to be defeated if your mental state is not if you don't have that winning mindset you know it's going to you're going to lesser yeah. competitor can win right yeah of just because of the stronger mindset yeah so the um the other lesson it taught me was a lot about fear because did you ever did you ever ride a motorcycle when you were young no as a passenger like my my, passenger. my uncle he was a uh, he used to ride bikes so uh, i used to be a uh, but as a passenger so most interesting thing about about a bike where you see is where you'll go so like if you're turning and you're worried you're going to run off the road mm-hmm. so you look there you focus because you're looking there that is where you'll go life is like what you see is where you will go if you're only going to focus on the negative things but if you look forward and you look towards your goal the bike will follow you yeah the second part is the weakest link on the chain in the chain being the you know the tires the bike the motor everything is you the human being and it's your fear mm-hmm. so the bike can make the corner but it's your fear that will get you to touch the brakes we call it teddy bear braking right um will get you to touch the brakes because you you're too scared too scared you're going in too fast Mhm. So it's your own fear and you're your own worst enemy. And you're the reason that you crash, not the machine. Right. And being able to recognize that it's like it's okay to be scared, right? Bravery is not fear. It's not the absence of it's fear. fear. Absence yes. of fear is like a 16 year old on 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 a thousand cc going to a corner <laughs> that's the absence of fear right <laughs> that's crazy right but bravery is not touching the brakes and and crashing even though you you you, you know you 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 you're scared yeah right and business is the same um it's okay for you to have to have fears it's natural for you to have fears as a matter of fact yeah, I mean, you don't have fears you're one of the crazy ones yeah i mean right? it's a natural and, human and emotion a right? it's a human a human aspect of life i mean you can't go through life not having any form of anxiety or or fear of anything it, i don't know you just you just a robot then you just probably pro- you programmed some way i don't know <laughs> but you got to have some form of uh like they say anxiety is is good in a way or it, it also helps you know that you care in a certain way 
in a certain way. It's not always yeah. the the all in be all about, oh, I have anxiety. I, I care all about it. No, it's also about knowing that you, you don't want to, you, 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 you have a vision in mind, but you also have that fear of like something might happen. And that's where you need to like center yourself and, and, and be mindful of the fact that it's okay. Whatever, whatever you go through it, just give yourself, give you a hundred percent. And whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? But you know you've given your utmost uh, time and you've given your all. And that's all that matters in life. You're not going to get it right 100% of the time. But if you give your, your full effort, that's all you can ask. No, 100%. I, I, I think because one of the other questions had to do with stress. And I don't think it's so much about being a robot, but it's understanding how to compartmentalize these things. I'll give you an example. I never feel stress because like stress is like, like for me, it's, it's like worry, mm -hmm. right? Worrying about something's not going to change. So I'm a little bit like you on that. I have this, I use acceptance as a tool mm -hmm. to not stress, to not worry, to accept and wait for that opportunity that I can do something about Got a it. situation. And then I act. Mm -hmm. And whether the, the most amazing thing, whether that act, actually brings you your desired result or not is irrelevant. The, it's, the process of acting against the concern already releases the stress, the anxiety, the worry. The fact that you're doing something about the oh, situation, yeah. you're doing something about the problem is, is, um, is therapy in itself, is therapeutic in itself, and that you're not sitting still. Yeah. And I think that's... Um, that's uh, a large part of, of like, if you're that individual and if you're sitting and you, you're feeling trapped and you don't know where to start, sometimes starting, regardless of what that activity exactly. is or action is or what the outcome is, <laughs> it's not so much about the outcome of the activity. The starting in itself it's makes the, the situation better. Yeah, it's the intention you know? that you, so, you're going yourself, you, 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 you're giving it. You're putting out in the universe, right? It's that intention. Exactly. So, sure, you're like, you know, you're worried about something at work. How's running going to help the situation? Again, it's this, it's, it's, it's that intention, right? It's, um, it's, it's every second is a second to change it, uh -huh. right? And. Every second, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. Let me tell you, if you think, no, well, I could be standing still for a second. Guess what? You stood still for that second. You lost one second of your life. So in my mind, you move backwards. Okay. Right? That's the way I see it. So you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. So what about Most, meditation? Yeah. If you think, is meditation stillness? Is that, how do you, how do you perceive meditation then? Let's, a large part for me, Oh, um, so, so, okay. So, so some of the things I say may not like, <laughs> you know, the, the Zen philosophy of letting things come to you. Yeah. I haven't really like, like I, 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 I get it, but, but, but I, I struggle. Okay. Right. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Meditation for me is me. Like, firstly, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I don't meditate every day. Let me go to the gym. That's meditation. Uh, I mean, visualize and, and things like that. But I visualize while doing some activity when I do meditate. Okay. So I, I, I don't mean like meditation, like in, in form of like, it's an only single entity that that's is, is stillness. Stillness can be, like you said, you go to the gym, you ride, your, you ride a bike. That is meditation. For me, meditation is being active uh, or doing something that oh. I know. So I didn't mean that. Meditation is just the, the only sense of yeah, the traditional sense. No, I just the the perspective of the of the talking point was to ask you like you said you, when it's when you still you lose one second. So I just I just wanted to understand like how do you feel like if those who are in that meditation stillness do they is it also in your in your perspective losing or is it also doing no, something no, that absolutely not okay okay I just so so, so <laughs> that's but, what but I meant. I'm also trying to speak from my experience. <laughs> yeah. So when. I meditate, what I'm doing for that time is I'm trying to be in the most present moment, right? So I'm, I'm listening to what am I hearing? 
what am I, you know, I'm, I'm breathing, uh, a deep breathing and I'm, and I'm trying to, what's the word I, um, I'm trying to go in. Okay. You try, you're trying, you're trying to, uh, that's an idea. Yeah. I'm trying to be conscious of my yeah. breathing. I'm trying to be conscious of my surroundings. I'm trying to be self-aware. And I'm trying to be in the in that moment. And just getting the energy of that moment without my my mind departing onto some fleeting thought. Mm -hmm. Because my mind's continuously active. Like thinking about this, thinking about sometimes thinking about the most odd random stuff. But I'm trying to like like be absolutely still, and that process of being absolutely still that doesn't stay with me. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to be in a state of um, not mindlessness, but like you know, yeah, in a in a peace. Yeah, but you become the watcher, right? You're watcher. mindful of your thoughts. Okay. You're watching your thoughts, and you you're making sure you you you're having good thoughts and constructive thoughts, and your mind is not controlling you. You are not your mind, mm -hmm. but your mind is that tool exactly. that you're using and you're putting into action. And for me, the meditation, firstly, it's positive. It's moving forward. It's helping you gain that control of your mind. But it's also helping you um, understand your emotions. So like if you're going through a difficult time, being still, the answers have a way of coming to you. Because you're dissecting, why do I feel angry? Why do I feel sad? Why do I feel whatever, jealous or whatever the case may be? And you're understanding this and you're not reacting to it. Mm -hmm. You know, like in a, in a very yeah. primitive sense. Uh, and even when you meditate and when you go into like a hostile situation, again, you're not reacting, right? You have that ability to breathe, take in, think, and then, then yeah. and that's powerful. If I can tell you reactions, mindless reactions, create so much anxiety, so much stress, and 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 um, chaos. we say reduce your progress to zero. Yeah. Because if you're in a job situation, or you're in a deal situation, or you're at work, and you know you suddenly have this blow up, no. It's, it's everything. People's perceptions of you, yes. your perception to deal with yeah, pressure, yeah. you know, their, your ability to deal with pressure, those things all get tested. And, and yeah, so I do think meditation is a very powerful tool. And it's definitely not being still is hard. Oh, yeah. No, I, I if agree. If that makes sense. I agree. No, I agree. I yeah. don't think at one point in time we ever still. Because like you said, your mind is that tool that's continuously churning you know, like it, it's just like a CPU. It's continuously churning when it's on. It's like pumping so many, so many uh, allocations of of memory, you know, to different parts of your of your brain or different aspects of your life. You know, one thing, one you'll be thinking of food, the next minute you'll be thinking of, oh, did I switch this off? Then you'll be thinking about, oh, I didn't finish a project. Oh, there's, I need to get to the gym. So there's 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 fundamental. There's so many aspects that the mind has has to go through. Uh, for you to focus or you're just on one single uh, task. But like you said, if you still, if you take yourself out of that chaos and you just watch and listen, which I still struggle with till today, because uh, sometimes I'm just like reactive. I don't really like give myself the time to process what is happening and then contribute. I just, I just kind of like explode, which is something I'm working on till today. Uh, yeah. But I was, I had to be made mindful of that. It's not like I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't go through the challenge or like you said, the learnings in life. Um, but I was aware that I needed to do something about it. And when you still, you give yourself the opportunity and the universe to actually give the, to give you the outcome that, that you, you know, you're working towards. No, hundred percent. And I think I must be honest. I'm also still working on it. Right. So I think you and, you and I are in the same boat. Um, I find I find uh, I find I don't struggle so much with the reaction, but I struggle with um, I struggle with with just being present. 
to just being present because my mind is continuously churning. It's working. You know, I struggle with sleep, those kinds of things. And, um, and, um, um, you know, growing up, you know, from like, like, as you get older, I remember speaking to, to, uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, moms Mm -hmm. and I was telling her, you know, I read this book and we were discussing it and she was, and I told her, but like, I feel like it's an impossible task because I just can't get that stillness. Yeah. And she's, you know, she told me it's like, it's because you're young. I think as you, as we grow up and as we get older, we, you know, these things are, we, 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 we achieve these milestones, right? Yeah. And, and maybe that's just a part of life, right? That growth, mm-hmm. because you lose certain things, yes. you know, like, hundred percent. You, you, you know, your, your energy, your health, like, yeah, things you know, your mobility, like <laughs> just not what it used to be. You're not as quick as you used to be, but you gain lots of other things, right? Mm-hmm. Wisdom, experience, um, the ability to, to be still, to be calm, to be rational. Um, and, and, and I think that can be, that's a different form of power, if I can call it that. Mm-hmm. So I think youth gives you this, 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 this one kind of power. Yeah. It gives you that energy, and, that, that burst of, of nitro, like you said. <laughs> yeah. It's like a burst of nitro. Whereas, uh, you know, when you're older, you understand racing is not just about a powerful engine. It could be about a light body. Like for example, two ways to make the car go faster, right? Put a bigger engine or have a lighter car. Mm-hmm. And then you start actually understanding the science of speed. Yeah. And you understand, okay, well, you know, I can't put anything more into this engine. But maybe I can reduce the weight. Weight, you yeah. Know? Maybe I can improve the aerodynamics. And now you really start getting like I mean you, I, Yeah, you start you start to you start to refine. Yeah, like I feel we're just getting started, right? Oh for sure. We you and I both. A, yeah, it's not a long way to go. <laughs> I think of it's like a long way to go, I, still, right? I still think of like cyclists and you know you they pick up their you know like pro cyclists. I mean they, mm-hmm. they they're super quick, like riding at like 80, 90 k's an hour, and I'm like thinking how. But like you said, once you understand the science of speed, uh, it it's not always about the loudest or the biggest or the heaviest. You know, sometimes a feather can be just as quick as as something that has loud noise. You know. So, like you said, it's we we we're just getting started and understanding to refine ourselves in a certain way, and it's scary in a way for me as well because there's certain things that are very uncomfortable to do, uh, like you know toxicity of people, cutting out people from your life, you know, because you also you don't want to be like that. You also don't want to be like over harsh and and like over be like just to be like cutting people that you've known all your life out, but if they're not good for you, it's so hard to like remove those, those and those, that toxicity out of your life. So it's like about, as you go along, it's we learning through those learnings, like you said, or through mm-hmm. those, like a challenge of, of letting go. But I feel, I, I honestly feel like it's, it's only, only the betterment of myself and the people that I'm around and who I associate with. We, we, we come from the same background. So I, like, I mean, I'm 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 no saint, right? Um, so the, but but we were loyal. We were all very loyal to each other because we grew up as, I mean, yeah, it's some that, of us know each other. We were four or five when we met. The communities we grew and, up in, yeah, and we grew up together, you know. And mm-hmm. to leave someone like that behind or to cut them off because you realize, you know. You need to move forward, and that you know it's not that person's time yet. Mm-hmm. You know they're not ready to yeah. make that that step. And um, I get you, like like I feel a lot of guilt, you know. Um, but it's it's needed. Yeah, it's it is. Needed. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it's needed on both sides, right? Yeah, because that's exactly what's needed. Because you don't know how you contribute to their exactly toxic environment right? exactly you could be toxic for somebody else and that's just the way it is 100 percent. so 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 the the but i do i do i do share that that um 
that sentiment. guilt of having to 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 leave people behind because you need to you need you want something different from life you know and 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 uh and you want to break away from toxic environments toxic things and toxic habits and you want to you you want to break free and and you know you know some people it's you know they don't they understand you know that. or they you know you, that's not what they want um and yeah i get that guilt i know that guilt yeah and coming from like you know cyber security cyber or tech background and in today's age like there's so much of toxic information and so much of toxic content out there i mean to be honest i feel people are addicted or attracted to chaos i always say <laughs> cuz I, i you know if somebody somebody would post something about a negative effect it will get it will get views it will get interaction it will get traction it will get go viral but mm. if there's a positive in if there's a positive message or a positive uh scenario that has occurred it doesn't get that much air time as it would a negative effect do you, like do you see that within the, the cyber security sp- or within the tech space like does it contribute to our our, our, our mental wellness as well well from your perspective it, but it's it's largely by design right so let me give you an example they are marketing firms that do what we call like mass cognitive influence mm-hmm. where they take a um, sort of like cambridge analytica okay. they take the fence cities and they polarize them in in any one particular direction so that they're no longer sitting on the fence and that they're and you do that by just providing them with the stimulus right that yeah. reinforces the the correct sort of belief structure and um discounts the balancing the you know it it just sort of like readjust the biases yeah and um and it's it's um it's interesting like if you look back this is dates way before the internet first law of warfare dividing conquer right mm-hmm. so how much of hate is actually engineered instead of like we believe it's intrinsically linked to our past and things that have happened between these groups of people right but as we start to work in these spheres of intelligence you start to understand how you know information warfare works yes you understand how um mass cognitive influence works what we call psychological operations work and even psycho- psychology in marketing and like you're saying people are attracted to 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 sort of bad news psychological effect is you know somebody smiling um versus somebody with a really angry sort of face emotion yeah it's the the, the angry face is going to elicit a response from you primarily because it's a uh, it's a fight or flight kind of because you 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 seeing you yeah you're seeing your distress senses are, yeah it's in danger yeah and distress and you know and so it grabs your attention and so you know that's why they they use those kinds of uh you know Tools. that's why yeah, they yeah. use that kind of language that's why they use the you know that kind of imagery etc and that's why they're yeah. kind of driving that kind of psychological behavior but that's largely for marketing mm-hmm. when you go lay it down then there's sort of the and i know it sounds conspiracy theorist but it's actually not I'll give you a couple of examples if you want there's the the use of that kind of psychology mm-hmm. for things like information warfare um election tampering you know political yeah espionage influence. whatever it is yeah yeah so like in um um i think it was 2016 we checked all the the fees must fall activities at snoop um and we found that the majority of the tweets actually didn't come from students at all and yeah. we found that when there was an outbreak of violence in the universities you know which created a lot of racial tension mm-hmm. i don't know if you can remember that yes yes i do it was like university of pretoria right yeah. for example right 
they felt like, oh, you, you know, the students of color were destroying cars, destroying, destroying lecture rooms, they couldn't go to school, etc. You actually take the phone data, tweet data, etc., the handheld the data. metadata, yeah. And we started, yeah, the metadata from that. And we started sort of, we weren't even looking for information warfare. We were just trying to show the police. We were trying to show SAPs. We could predict when the students would turn violent. And then the funny thing we, we find out is like, wow, there's no students. The concentration of students when there were violent outbreaks was incredibly low, which then led us to ask the question, well, okay, where did this come from? Who are these people? Mm-hmm. And then you start unraveling, and then you start doing the same with Natal violence. And then you start unraveling, oh. and you start understanding, you know, the, the wow. degrees of information warfare. And, you know, it's not like, like Cambridge Analytica is like an example from, um, you, you know, globally, you know, Cambridge Analytica is from the UK, Russians tampering with the US elections. That's another yes. example. Yeah. But like the ANC war room was a good example for South Africa. Uh, you know, marketing companies infiltrating uh, groups and stirring up racial tensions, you know, those kinds of things. Wow. Yeah, I think a lot of people wouldn't have known that. Because <laughs> we don't, I mean, well, we don't, like those around, we only see what's front, like, give an example now, X uh, and the whole US elections and, you know, all the all the tweets going out, like you said. Um, I saw the other day there was uh, in in Asia as well. They, they, I don't know what the what the exact term is, but these guys have like this massive. They've got like a tree of phones, you know, all connected mm-hmm. to bots, uh, bot accounts, and just pumping out tweets. Like, do you know what do you know what that term was called? By any chance? Yeah. Um, well, th- there's a couple. There, yeah. th- there's a there's a couple sort of. Uh, um, so. In in Philippines, you you've got almost these. Uh, um, there's almost like a scam industry that's rife in the Philippines at the mm-hmm. moment. Everything from IVR, which is interactive voice recordings, to romance scams, to um, yeah, phishing, um, everything. Yeah, phishing, all of those kinds of things, um, and um, you know, like here in Vietnam, also you've got very similar. Uh, kind of activities um, uh, happening. So, um, no, look, on, 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 on Twitter, it used to be the good old, there's a building of people working for an intelligence organization. Mm-hmm. Each person has like a thousand identities. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, sock puppets, we call them sock puppets. Sock puppets. <laughs> and they're manually driving the stuff, right? So it goes from that to... Um, you know, from from to like serious AI driven operations, those kinds of things. You know, deep fakes. You know, in 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 that area. But um, um, yeah, it, it's it's actually not a new thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you can remember. There's a term called mimetic warfare. No, I don't. Okay, so so you 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 can Google it. Okay. Everything I'm telling you, by the way, you can Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the check it out. You get the information on it, like the Facebook, yeah. uh, the Russian election tampering. You know, there's a report. No, I've seen, I've seen a few, uh, a few yeah. articles and a few documentaries about that as well. Yeah, even Fees Must Fall. Yeah, you Google Snow Fees Must Fall. You'll see the articles. Okay, wow. Well, online. Okay. The, um, the um, so 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 I'm I'm I really like, you know, I'm 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 like I just speak from 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 the from the experience. Fact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and 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 the experience. So mimetic warfare, you, you Google it, but it's actually using memes to actually drive. sort of, yeah, drive uh, human behavior, voting, um, political influence, uh, those kinds of things. And we used to have it in South Africa. Yeah. If years I look, ago. I mean, I think of, the, ago. think of how, you know, just billboards, billboards were part of one of the, one of the means people were, I mean, you drive and you see this massive billboard. You see a you see a message on it. Obviously, you're going to be attracted to it. It's something that's in your eye. I mean, strategically placed so that you can consume that uh, that information, whether it be whether it, how you perceive it, but it's there. You know, because like even newspaper newspaper articles or uh, 
you know, you'd go to the store and you see a flyer outside. It's all messaging. Something, you know, it, it wasn't digital, but it was in, it was, it was the, I don't know if you, if you have you ever watched the movie Focus, you know, with Will Smith? No, no, I didn't actually. So if you do get a chance, watch it. It's how they manipulate a person to get yeah. an outcome that they want by just subtly placing little elements of, of what they want you to see in your everyday life. Right, right, right. So, 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 so very much like, I don't know if you're familiar with the term NLP, Neural Linguistic Pro Program. Yeah. Very much like NLP, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, 100%. I mean, that, but I mean, that, that they use in boardrooms, right? They teach, they teach people, they teach executives <laughs> how to use that. It's like, uh, um, yeah, it's like, uh, but NLP has been around for a while. Um, I'll give you an example because you'll remember some of these examples. You remember sometimes you get on your phone when when you were back in South Africa, you'd get like this atrocious, like a doctor of color did this great deed and it was written off and, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, or you get that picture of the, you know, the, the, the kids sitting on the other kids, riding them like, like horses. Have you ever seen any of that kind of stuff? No, not not that I can recall. No, and 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 anyway, it was it was largely it was largely a debate. It was largely two driving forces, right? One of of creating this, you know, people are, are divide are all on the spectrum, right? And what you want them to be is 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 as divided as possible, um. Because you're either, you know, you're either the right wing or you're the left wing. Left wing, yeah. Whatever the case may be. And there's a certain way you don't want to lose people, um, you know, uh, to to either side or, or to the side in the middle. To the side who, who may actually be be speaking um, the truth. to both sides. Yeah. So to, to attract them to the left or to the right. Well, essentially what you're doing is you're sending out memes, which maybe for laughs may come across as informative or something, mm -hmm. but then you go and you Google it and you find out ah, this is not true. There was no doctor who performed the first, like sort of whatever surgery and it all got silenced because, you know, it was of color. Color, yeah. You find out that who comes up with that, you know, and, and, and a large part of that process, like the mimetic warfare process was pumping memes like this in order to create those divisions in society. Right. It's not something a lot of people talk about. Um, you know, and, and of course, we didn't research it. We didn't investigate it. Mm -hmm. It was way before, you know, it was, it was before I was still, I guess, breaking into boxes back then. We weren't doing like, you know, national, like intelligence. Intelligence, yeah. Kind of works, kind of stuff we do today, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, there's so much of in-depth. You know, we can talk about this forever. <laughs> yeah, we kind of went off, right? Uh, <laughs> no, but plan, that, no, but the, that's what it's about. Questions. It's just, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's uh, when you when when you when you're so passionate about something, it's it, uh, it everything ties in together with with how you're feeling and what you want to what you want to protrude to you know to the to the universe, and uh, and also with that comes the future. You know, like. Where do you see snowed? Where do you see yourself? Or how do you see yourself? Uh, I'm trying to get the correct, uh, you know, analogy at, or the correct term for you. The future. What does the future hold for snowed and for Niten? I think, um, I think I'd like snowed as a platform to to become a global platform not because you know like i want to build a global brand or anything like that but i'd like you know we don't have that many you know african success stories of like technology that's built mm -hmm. in our hometown mm -hmm. that then goes around the world yes you know where a kid driving down the highway can point and say you know that that company there that they make something and it goes around the whole world. Wow. And I think, I think 
that's important for that kid to have that. If you ever want that kid to believe that they can do something mm -hmm. that can conquer the whole world, you know, that they can touch the lives of people in other continents, in other parts of the world, that they can build technology, that they can create a unicorn. I'm not sure trying to create a unicorn, you know, you just but, to, yeah, you're trying to create but, something, it, something special to you that can touch the world. Also, it's a platform, right? Mm -hmm. It's a platform if, you know, that, that you open the doors for VC, for IP, for all of these components for the next generation. Let me give you an example. Um, I'm sorry, is the noise in the background too much at the moment? It's louder than before, but it's okay. No problem. Sorry, man. It's, it's, it... Okay. No, no worries so, at let all. Me start with, um, uh, let me give you an example. Right? Okay. When we first launched Smart, I couldn't sell the device mm -hmm. because nobody wanted to believe that a product from South Africa that was built in South Africa, especially one that was built in Victoria, especially one that was built like, like, you know, in Claudius, <laughs> was going to compete mm -hmm. with the big US brand, with the big UK brand, with the big Israeli brands. With the... What's so hard to conceive about that? Like, why is it so difficult for people to believe that we have the talent to produce? Mindset, right? Something on that scale and that level. It's because they've never seen it mm -hmm. happen before. I'm very lucky. We're the proud holders of a South African innovation award. And I'm, this year, I got an award from the president also. Oh, wow. So Congratulations. I'm very, I mean, it's great, right? I don't, I don't know if, like, that's a great honor to have your own home country's innovation award. It's fantastic. But we got awards outside our home country before we got awards inside our home country. We got clients outside before we got clients inside. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and a large part of that is that they needed that cross-border reference. They needed that. Like people outside our own country were more ready to believe that yes. we had that kind of engineering capability and intellectual capital and ingenuity than the people at home. Now mm -hmm. you start asking, you know, why is that? Like, you know, why do we, because that's bigger than me. That's yes. a bigger problem than me, right? Like, why do we believe something that comes from exactly. any other place is better than anything we can produce? And how do we change that? And I think a large part of it is, you know, baked into the past, yeah. but a large part of it is also baked into, give me an example of when we've done it. We've got to create those examples. Mm. We've got to create those stories that people can attach to, that can change so they can make that paradigm shift. And so that when that kid walks in the door with their little appliance, their cybersecurity or AI startup, and they said, well, hey, man, you know, I'm from Lens and I built this AI, you know, tool, yeah. this AI enabled tool, and they're going to be like, fantastic. Let's see, you know, mm -hmm. let's give it a shot. Let's, you know, like, let's hear you out. Let's, uh, Let's test the hypothesis. Let's put it in a client environment. You know, let's fund it. Let's, you, you, you let's know, grow it. Yeah, let's grow it. Let's, let's, let's grow it. But without that example, you know, they're going to have the same experience, you know, I am. So, yeah, that's why I say, I think it's a platform. I think it's a platform to make that change, to, 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 to open doors for, for the future. So our, our whole, our whole mission at Snowd is defend the future. Mm -hmm. And, in, and in, in one way, we mean the future like future technology. Right. But in another way, we mean like defend the next generation, you know, of, I get of it, I get not it. just South Africans, but Africans, you know? Yes. Hence, we work with human trafficking. Hence, we, you know, we work with law enforcement. Hence, we, you know, we work with kids from disadvantaged backgrounds. Hence, we're trying to change that perception of what is possible as a South African innovator or South African entrepreneur. Uh, 
I love that. Uh, and I think we both, I think we both got from the same cloth is that we want to create something that we also can be proud of, not just from it, from people who are outside of our, of our, how you say communities or our spectrum. They can also be proud of what we've done. You know, like, like you said, that guy from Pretoria, from Claudius, you know, he's created something. Um, that is also like my mission is not just to be a global brand, but also to be uh, a voice for people who also don't have it within our own, you know, because I think we, we so like, if you think about it, we always like attracted to, to celebrities that are, say your, your Jay Shetty is your Deep, Deepak Chopra's, your Robin Sharma's, your, uh, Gore, Gore, forgive me if I, if I butcher this, but your Gore Gopal Das. Your dasas, you know, your international um, yogis and, and spiritual uh, um, celebrities, so to speak. And my, my, my mission for this is not about, it's not about to get to that level. It's just to, to give a voice and platform for those who don't have that, that, that voice. Or they can, they, can, they can count on somebody that they know, like you said. It's just about putting that into people's, our people's minds going forward. No, I, 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 I agree. I think, I think also it's that, it's that intent, right? And if you, if you, you know, it's like our conversation has come full circle. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, the universe is in its, in its own way signaling to you and telling you, you know, this is the path, you know, and every time you, you create content, you put it out there, you kind of, you kind of, um, surrender it right mm -hmm. to the world, um, you know, and, 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 and people, you know, and, and people consume it. You don't understand the, 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 the knock on yeah. effect. You yeah. don't understand that ripple. Yeah, I'll give you a, just putting that intent into yeah, the universe. I, so we talk about all the negativity, we talk about the lost souls and everything, and then you talk about that positive ripple effect, mm -hmm. and that's what you know, like you know, that's that that's the universe is calling possibly for 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 what you're doing. Yeah, and I'm, just, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of it, man. I'm just yeah, man. We got it. We got to get more. We got to get. We got to get it going. More, we've got to get more people involved. Uh, there's so much of people. There's so much people can achieve. They, we just need to, we just need to start giving, giving them a little push here and there, you know. And, and there's so much of, there's so much people are, are capable of. And, um, but I'm happy just to also like, like you said, just to give that one person, you know, just that, that start is is more than enough for me. And I'm grateful and humble. I get, I have the opportunity, or I've. I've I've given them the opportunity to do those, and, and it, it fulfills you as well as a person. Like you know that, you know, like you say your 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 calling, or I don't want to butcher anything, but it's it's something that you you feel so good about because it's like a success. You know, we all we all strive for success in life. Nobody wants to oh. fail continuously, and success stories should be also you know celebrated much as we 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 try to learn from our from our challenges and our our shortcomings. We don't celebrate it enough. You know, there's, we celebrate it for, for a little while where we, where we spend too much time on negativity. You know, positivity also it doesn't get the same, same recognition that a negative effect does. And I feel like we, we just need to start bringing that up to balance. You know, it's going to take time, but we need to start bringing it up to level and then slowly, slowly we start to fold it up again. Pass that, pass that, uh, you know, anecdotal uh, thought and negativity needs to have uh, a long-term effect on your life. You know, their thinking is going to shape mm -hmm. my thinking. Your thinking is going to shape my thinking, and that's that's a that's a massive. I think I think that's powerful, man. Mm -hmm. I think that's genuinely truly powerful, and I think um, yeah, I'm 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 uh, you know you know, you know show's going to go from strength to strength, and 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 you're going to go from strength to strength. You know, you're looking for answers, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people, you're going to help a lot of people find answers no, along I... the way. And I think that's the most powerful thing about yeah. what I got from, from looking at the show, 
from the outside. Thank you. But so I don't much. think you see it that way. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's like you're... Yeah. 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 No, no, that's okay. I understand. But thank you so much. Like it, it's good to get that kind of perspective and feedback. Because uh, I probably, like you said, I probably won't see it. But to hear from an objective perspective, I really appreciate that. And I'm uh, thankful for that. And, oh, but thanks a lot, Nitan. I really appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate it. All right. Take it easy, man. Bye. Thank you.